Tony Finau is 19 feet tall. Tony Finau is a super athlete. Tony Finau could probably take any sport and be great at it. Can any of you say the same out there? A couple of you, yeah, I know you're going, yeah, I was great in high school. Yeah, okay, I get it. But the vast majority of us, we're not super athletes. All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of GTD. And this time, I'm talking about what I've been working on with the man, John Clement. If this is the first time you're watching my content, welcome and hit the subscribe button right now. Go ahead, click the little red button down there below it. Click the subscribe button. Go ahead, pause the video. You can do it. Subscribe right there, off to the right. Click the little bell icon and select all so that you don't miss any of the content coming up because I'm getting into the Sean Clement review, I'm working with the man himself via Skype lessons. And I want to go over today some of the things that we worked on in our first two Skype lessons together. Here we go. All right, so if you've been following me for a while now, you know that Sean Clement reached out in one of my videos and invited me to try his, his swing and, and to go under his tutelage for an undetermined amount of time and see just what I could make of his swing and see if he could help me to finally cross over into good skilled golf. In doing so, we've had a couple of Skype lessons. We've emailed back and forth a bunch of times. We've, we've worked through some of the things he wants me to start working on in the beginning. I recorded via a screen recorder on my phone, this, this camera that I'm recording on right now, I recorded an entire hour and 20 minute session which was full of all kinds of aha moments and great stuff and breakthroughs and just a real sort of understanding, a further understanding of what I knew of Sean's methods and his teachings and, and sort of the task oriented way that he attacks the golf swing. However, in the process of doing the screen record, I went back to look over the footage and the sound was turned off. Sound setting was turned off. I have no idea how that happened. I use screen recorder all the time, all the time. And I don't know how that particular setting got switched. So in order to salvage that footage and not sort of jump forward and then do some sort of contrived pretend, let's do that again and try and recreate the same magic. What I'm going to do is this. I'm going to show you sort of the way my swing is now. I'm going to also show you some footage of what my swing was before. And I'm going to include some of the footage that I feel would be the highlights of where he was showing me some things and then I was actually going through and executing some of the things that he set forth in the lesson. And then I'm just going to narrate over it and provide my own sound and I'll just kind of tell you what we were talking about during that part of the video so that I could put it together and salvage the footage and it not be a complete waste. Also, it's worth mentioning that at some point, probably from the time this video is being recorded, maybe a week and a half or two weeks into the future, we're gonna do another Skype session and kind of go over it and, and start to really dial this whole thing in. And if you haven't already, Sean has given me access to his premium channel. His premium channel has tons of content on it. And what they've done, from my understanding, is they've taken it all and broken it down into different criteria, different ways that you may want to search or look through or categorize all of the different teachings that he has, the different lessons. It might be on the backswing, it might be course vlogs, it could be on timing, it could be on posture, it could be on setup, and they're all categorized in that way. And there's three different levels of the premium channel that you can subscribe to for different fees. Included in some of those packages, you can get access to Sean himself via a swing analysis once a month, or he does Skype lessons once a week once a week, so you could get the same kind of treatment that I'm getting here to work on your game. Now, first things first, anytime you're going to go through something like this, you gotta know your baseline, right? You gotta know where you were starting. And to kind of give you just a quick little overview of where I was starting from, I had just started a couple of videos where I was building my own swing, where I was kind of trying to go back and strip away all of these uh, methods and, and, and different approaches that I had tried over the course of the last two years, trying to strip all those away and just get back to 
Who is Chad? What is Chad? And how does Chad hit the golf ball? So I sent him some video of that. And the first thing that he pointed out to me in the very first conversation that we had, he asked me this question. Why is it that you have such a restricted backswing? I didn't know the answer to that because I honestly didn't feel like I had a restricted backswing. I felt like I came way too far with my backswing. What he was talking about was my lower body. In that first swing that I sent him, he noticed that when I swung, I would get in this position, right? My elbow was really close to my side. It was crunched up almost like I had just folded the elbow up. And my hips were only turned about this far. But then he showed me this from face on. When I took my backswing, it was like this, right? Now, what he showed me was to go ahead and turn my hips enough to where I got more of an angle like that, and I could get the club out away from my body and have more width. So instead of taking it away and staying restricted like that, he wanted me to make more of a turn like this. And at first that felt crazy weird. That felt really weird, right? It felt like, no, this, this can't be right. But then you watch his videos and you go back and you see that he clearly, he does that. He really gets it away from me. That left knee really comes in. And I realize some of you have, may have some mobility issues. Some of you may not be able to tweak your left knee you know, quite as much as he does or as I can do, and I'll show you that from the, from the straight on. But this, look how my, my, my belt buckle is pretty much facing you, and then you put the club out here, and that width is created. Really, you have to stay within your limits and your confines. You can only do what you can do, but for me, my personal flexibility, my body type, what I am, what I can and can't do, there's no reason why I shouldn't have been able to do more of this instead of that. I think what he was saying was, is that from here, the only option I had was to muscle it, was to muscle it, engage the muscles, really fight it and push and try and leverage the golf ball. Now there's a lot of great players that swing with leverage and have shorter back swings. The first one that comes to mind is one of my favorite guys out on tour, Tony Finau. Tony Finau is awesome. I love watching him play golf. Pretty short backswing, monster scud missile distance, right? Just incredible. Tony Finau is 19 feet tall. Tony Finau is a super athlete. Tony Finau could probably take any sport and be great at it. I guarantee you that. I was decent at athletics, even me. I'm nowhere close to Tony Finau. Forget that. What he's looking for is a swing that can last a lifetime. Without all that tension, without all that bound up position and the freedom to swing back and forth, you can be swinging a golf club well into your 200s. The first thing we had to do was free up that backswing. That's what we worked on. And it was, it was driven by the legs, right? So instead of taking the club away with my arms, we're going to gather. He always says gather. He says gather up your sword or gather the club up to the top. And to me, gather could also be replaced by heave. Like if you're going to heave, like he always talks about like a, a bag of, of sand or a sack of potatoes if you were going to heave it into the pickup truck. You're going to go up first, you're going to get the ground, and then you're going to use it to heave that up. And your arms are going to support, and of course they're going to be the things that throw the bag up. But your legs and your lower body, that's what's going to drive it from your hands where you hold it up into that truck and things like that. Those task oriented, relatable points. That's the, that's the thing that really drove me to Sean Clement in the first place. That's the reason that I've said he's such a great coach is because he talks about things that we all know about. So that's what we worked on first was getting, just sort of heaving this up without swaying. Did I mention without swaying? Because if you heave it up and you're over here, it's no good. And a lot of people maybe try to emulate what Sean does. And instead of staying centered 
with their head and not going back and forth or getting their weight way back over here or way out over here. You can't, you can't sway out and try and sway back in. You can't fall over and then do like that. You want to keep your head kind of centered, but it's totally fine to allow your head to move up and down because as you're feeling the weight of the arms and the club together, you're feeling all that weight, you're relaxing it. You're not engaging it. And then you are by bouncing up and down a little bit, getting that feel because you're about to use your legs. Kyle Berkshire, the long drive champion that is just starting to blow up all over the place. He's on YouTube. He's got a YouTube channel. He's working with Bryson DeChambeau. He's with the GM Golf and Good Good Guys. Kyle Berkshire's all over the place. Kyle Berkshire, when he's getting ready to stand up there and hit a golf ball, he rocks back and forth on his feet because he's getting ready to engage his lower body. And I've seen people talk about that. If you've seen video of Kyle Berkshire, you see that. You've noticed it. Go look him up if you haven't seen him. That's what we're trying to do is set it in the beginning and take it to the top and just be free and get width. And then from there, you have to choose one of your tasks. Now, for me originally, I was thinking about driving the nail with A.J. Bonar. He doesn't, Sean doesn't necessarily come out and talk about that one. Instead, he uses the squeeze the golf ball through the door frame analogy. And for a while, I was working on that. However, I just sent Sean an email because I had a little bit of an epiphany. And I said, you know, when you think about driving a nail with a hammer, or if you think about squeezing a ball into a door frame, for me personally, it created, whether I was conscious of it or not, it created an association between those things, those tasks, and an abrupt stop. When you drive a nail with a hammer, you don't nail all the way through, you nail and the hammer and the board offer so much resistance that you stop and there's almost like a, and then you get into your next, your next hammer, right? And if you're squeezing a ball through a door frame, you're gonna pretty much stop at the door frame. So there's this stop right there. Well, for me, when I think about stopping, that's almost like me getting focused on the ball and becoming ball bound. And so I stop here and I flip there. So instead, I have now made even further progress since the last time I worked with Sean because I'm focusing on cutting grass. That's one thing he talks about a lot, cutting grass. So if you're familiar with Sean at all, you know about the perpetual motion drill and the cutting grass motion drill. I guess they're one and the same, but you're basically as if you were going to cut nice, tidy rows of grass, all right? And you had to do it all day. You, you're not just going to cut a couple of rows and then go home. You're going to have to do it eight hours a day, five days a week. You're going to want something that is pretty effortless and easy so that you're not just dead as a dog when you get home at night. And when you do that, you stay centered and you allow your arms to just kind of go naturally. And you work it while you take little baby steps forward and you stay centered. Notice my head stays in between my feet. I never get out here. I never get over here. I never lean it too much this way or too much that way. So in that grass cutting sort of vein, thinking about that, that started to, to sort of strike a chord with me. And so with that freedom of the backswing, taking it up and heaving it up here, and I get ready to come back and cut grass, and of course, the handle leads this way, and then when you're coming back the other way, the handle leads back that way, and so on and so forth. With that freedom, you start to, to try and apply that to the golf swing to hit the ball. In the beginning, it may you may get strikes that are way back here. You may whiff and miss the ball. You might top it. You might chunk it. You're going to get some poor strikes because it's completely different than what you've been doing in a lot of cases. So it takes a little bit of time to get used to. But when I set up and I think about, okay, can I cut grass from where I am right now? And I'm picturing that little bit of row of grass in front of the golf ball. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to whip through and, and cut through that grass. And then I just kind of 
my backswing becomes, okay, I've cut this way, now I'm going to go back and I'm going to cut that way. And that really works, for me anyway. It may not work for all of you. But I think about that and I think I'm cutting grass, cut, cut. And that wasn't the best contact, but hey, it's my first swing, give me a break. I want to feel the weight. I really want to feel that weight. That's why I get this little bounce in the beginning. And I think Sean might do the same thing, but I, I really do that to kind of make sure that my legs are engaged, but my arms are not, right? And then I can really feel that if I do it, and I swing through, I'm going to cut that grass. Cut. Cut. And I really try not to sway off the ball and just pretend that I'm doing the perpetual motion grass cutting drill. And then if I do that, I sit up and I take it back and cut my way back, and then cut my way through, that really works for me. So I'll set up one more time. I'm, I'm going to make sure that my arms are nice and relaxed, I feel the weight, and then I cut and cut. And cut. Cut. So that's the evolution so far. That's where I'm at so far. Now for you, when you go to start, uh, it, it is kind of important to pick a task. And you can't just pick one at random. You need to pick one that's going to fit with what ails you. You need to, fit, you need to pick one that's going to fit into what it is that you're trying to do. And that may require a little bit of assistance from Sean. Best way to reach him is going to be through his website. Go check out his website. See all the stuff that I'm looking at. Maybe you get signed up for one of the packages. Maybe you don't. Maybe you go through there and you think, ah, this is, this is not for me. But at least go give it a look. And continue to watch these videos. I'm going to continue to show you my progress. This is just some of the things that he gave me to start with. This is the tip of the iceberg. We're just barely getting the boat underway. We're not out to sea yet. We're just trying to get away from the dock. And already, I can feel and see a big difference in my swing and in the contact that I make with the golf ball. So I appreciate you guys watching. As I said, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Stick around with the channel. Lots of great stuff coming. As I said, I've got some affiliations this year that I'm going to announce. I've got a new driver coming up I'm going to show the unboxing of, even though it's a used driver. It's going to be new to me. Sundays at 3 with GTD is continuing to roll on every Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And of course, just like this video, every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. See you in the next video.